Hello. The title of my um, video uh, for this module is Mercy Otis Warren. The woman I chose for this discussion is Mercy Otis Warren. I had never heard of Mrs. Warren before taking this course on the American Revolution. <clears throat> While there are several things that distinguish Mercy Otis Warren, um, the most important among them is the fact that she's the only woman who lived through the Revolution who wrote a, a historical accounting of it. Milio asks the question, if the story of Betsy Ross uh, did not exist, do you think a woman of some other profession would have filled the shoes of a female revolutionary representative? I tend to think that the answer to that question is yes, and it's very likely that it would have been Mercy Otis Warren. Um, perhaps the reason she was not was because her history of the revolution was not published until quite a few years after the revolution ended. Martha King writes that Mercy Warren, Mercy Warren stopped and started her history for almost three decades by the time of its publication in 1805, when she was 77 years old. When completed, Warren's three-volume, 1,300-page history of the rise, progress, and termination of the American Revolution was an impressive chronicle that spanned the period from, 18, from 1761 to 1801. How important was it to have a famous female representative from the American Revolution? It must have been very important if the character Betsy Ross was more or less invented, according to historian Laurel Thatcher Ulrich, to fill that role. Friedman and Schaefer quoted Mercy Warren as saying that every active member of society had to participate in the battles and diplomacy of the revolution. And because every manly arm was occupied in direct defense of the new nation, <clears throat> excuse me, and might therefore fail to record vital events, it was her patriotic obligation <clears throat> to record the new and unexperienced events exhibited in a land previously blessed with peace, liberty, simplicity, and virtue. Warren offered this as justification for her writing of her history as a woman daring to write such rather than leaving it to the traditional purview of the men of her time. The need for a notable female contributor to the American Revolution, even by Americans today, is evidenced in the continuing acceptance of the iconic Betsy Ross, in spite of contributions such as Ulrich's challenge to the validity of that legend. I, for one, would like to see less promoting an elevation of that legend and more credence applied to the unprecedented accomplishment of Mercy Owen Warren, a real figure in American history and a valuable contributor to the historical account of our war for independence. Lester Cohen writes about how Warren's history is actually superior to the other few written by men at the time. He states that although her concerns and the categories she used to interpret history were similar to those of the other historians, her history illustrates more clearly than theirs how a, how a commitment to Republican ideology and concern for its future generated an ethical theory of history. King also made the additional point concerning Warren's history that her position on the political aspects of the revolution were born out of her being raised in the politically involved Otis family, along with her famous brother and political activist, James Otis. <clears throat> she also married James Warren, who was also involved in politics, and both associations brought her into close contact with a number of political players of the time, including John and Samuel Adams, Thomas Jefferson, and George Washington, among others. When she writes about these men in her history, she is writing from first-hand experience and observation, which lends strong and unique credence to her accounting of the revolution. I, I have really enjoyed researching and learning about Mercy Otis Warren, and my hope is that she will become more widely known among students of history and given the appreciation she deserves. Thank you for watching my video.